Today we're using this EMG device to test and figure out what's the absolute best way to train legs. And I have some questions. Like does the width of your stance really matter in terms of quad activation? Is there a way to target one hamstring muscle over the others based upon how you position your feet? What about calves? Does toe position even matter? As well as any other dumb question I might have along the way. But first, I have to shave my leg hair into a sweater. We're starting off with the leg extension because there's been so many case studies centered around this one piece of equipment and so much has been learned and all of it makes you realize how much every little dumb thing matters. One study showed that when you trained exclusively with heavier weights, something you could do four to six reps max, the rec fem was the only muscle to show significant growth. It's the one that if you contracted it while you walk around the mall all day, you might be able to trick some people into thinking you got a big old, keep in mind just how heavy the dick. You'd have to put on the entire stack and then tack on a bunch of other crap and still you probably end up getting more than six reps. It's still too light. You know what I need? I need a dead. Perfect. In that very same study, the other participants that just trained in the 15 to 20 rep max range only saw visible growth in their vastus lateralis. And this study used an MRI to track the growth of each individual muscle, so we know it's accurate. It's not like the way you used to measure cup sizes in middle school. B plus. So that alone tells us the weight you use potentially has a huge effect on the muscles you actually end up targeting. Another study found that partial reps on the leg extension done at long muscle lengths, so the initial part of the movement yielded more hypertrophy than partial reps at the end range or even full range of motion. Now that last study, we might have to take it with a grain of salt because it was done with 20 untrained women. It's not because they're women. Women are smarter, better, blah, blah, blah. It's that they were untrained. If I took my aunt to the gym and had her do leg extensions after she smoked two parliament lights in the parking lot, she would flex everything from her feet to her face because she has no spatial or body awareness. Still, it gives us an incredible insight. I just wish it was done on a trained population because untrained people respond to everything. But it does make a solid case for time under tension and finding a way to train at long muscle lengths, whether that's other leg exercises or even other body parts that have a similar path like tricep extensions. And it made me realize one of the things I wanted to test with this guy today, and it could be a flaw with all the studies I talked about, the old grip it and rip it. Calm down, lady, it's not a civvy. See, I've always been curious how much of the tension gets dispersed when you really grip onto those handles and pull yourself down. How much of the load leaves your legs and jumps into your arms, chest, form, your face. Turns out, it was significant. Even after completing all the reps where I held on, taking a very short rest, and then going right into the ones where I used no hands, I got more activation out of every single quad muscle. And this was a moderate amount of weight. I probably could have got 20, maybe 30 reps if I snorted enough pre-workout, but it was heavy enough to almost lift me off the pad. Which brings me to my next thought. At a certain point, you're gonna have to hold on, otherwise it's gonna lift your ass up. But what if? I'll be honest with you, I did that one more for me. I didn't expect anybody to take a toe strap into the gym, but that was a massive difference. I say screw it, what are they gonna do? Kick you out of the gym? There's plenty more to choose from. I'm sure you're gonna find another one that also celebrates Pizza Fridays. Next, let's talk about stance, because we all know the wider your feet go, the more you pull on those adductor muscles because they have to keep your knees from screwing off, as well as your glutes, but I'm curious, does the stance you take have a different effect on those individual quad muscles? The answer is, yeah. Kind of. Starting out by looking at just the lateralis, the sweep of your quads, there's little to no difference, which sucks. You'd hope there'd be something because I did everything from nice and wide to stupid low to, to ridiculously high, nothing. On the other hand, there was a huge difference in terms of activation with the rectus femoris, which also kind of sucks because who really cares about the rec fem? What is interesting is this is less about foot placement and more about putting pressure through the toes. The more pressure you have on those toes, the more rec fem activation you get. It is helpful though, because previously when I trained people and they had horrible ankle mobility and they'd shift all their weight on their toes in a leg press, I usually just make them walk their feet up or go sit outside and think about what they've done. But now we at least know they're getting rec fem activation through the roof. So that's good. But there is good news because there was differences with the medialis. The lower my feet were, the more activation I got out of that VMO to the point when my feet were all the way at the bottom, pressure only on my toes, that activated the most. I've had several people reach out and say, somebody copied your EMG series. I'm not the first to do it. I won't be the last. 
at the end of the day, I think it's only a good thing. But I will say his reasoning was awesome. He reached out and said, just so you know, I bought it over a year ago. So technically, I thought of it first. That's so good, I'm not even mad. I just wish I knew that worked years ago because I would have stood up at the last wedding I went to and said, you can't marry that man because I masturbated to you first. Also, because we have different goals. I'm using this as a tool to see where and how I can isolate the muscle even more and make my training more efficient because Eventually, I'm gonna build a program based upon all the things I've learned and make it for people that only have 30 to 40 minutes in the gym and only fill those workouts with the most hyper-targeted exercises. That way, people can get their workouts in and then get back to their dumb wife and kids. Next up, let's test to see if the positioning of your feet actually affects which hamstring muscle you're targeting. Now, I lost the gas drop. We're gonna test this by putting a sensor on the two superficial hamstring muscles. The third one is actually tucked underneath this bastard, but it has the same exact action. So if changing the position of our feet does make a difference, that tells us everything we need to know. The semi-tendinosis turns your foot in and the biceps femoris turns your entire leg out. So, so I expect there to be a pretty dramatic difference. I don't want a ball falling out. Even just standing here, I can already tell. Watch, this is just me turning my foot after the hamstring's already flexed. It's actually even more exaggerated than I thought. You can see when I laterally rotate my feet that the biceps femoris is the predominant driver of this exercise, but the moment I immediately rotate those feet, turn them in, it jumps into the semi-tendinosis. That's one of the most significant differences I've found considering it's the same muscle group and all we're doing is turning our feet in a different direction. And that's crazy to think too, because most of the time when I see somebody do this exercise, their feet are cockeyed, they're going in different directions, they're just trying to get the weight up, but more important than that, especially with hamstrings, is how you get the weight up. Just because I'm curious, I wanna see if that's still true when I'm doing a hip hinge movement. Turns out it was all that outer hamstring muscle, your biceps femoris. I don't know what the hell the other one was doing. I even tried to force it in there by turning my toes in. Nope. But this is good news though, because now we know we can actually aim. It's like when you used to piss in the snow as a kid. Still to this day, my piss cursive is better than my written cursive. Just to make sure we're clear, pretend like this is the back of your left leg without all the fat on it. If you want to target that biceps femoris, the outermost hamstring muscle, then it's safe to assume doing movements like stiff legs or stiffs on the hyper and turning that foot slightly out is gonna get the most activation. Or sticking to your leg curl exercises like lying or seated and putting your feet into an external rotation. Personally, I really exaggerate those feet and turn them out, but I can't recommend that because that's probably not the safest thing for your knees, but I don't give a shit. And if you wanna target what I'm gonna call those inner hamstring muscles, the ones that are closest to your junk, then you're gonna to wanna to do exercises like dumbbell leg curls because those inherently target it because you have to turn those feet in to actually hold the dumbbell or any other leg curl exercise. Just make sure you immediately rotate your feet. A random aside, I've only worn this shirt once to a bachelor party and I remember it being disgusting, but I have no idea how I got so much glitter in my armpit. Maybe I do. And before I even started testing calves, I stumbled across a case study that went into way more depth than I could possibly do. They took ultrasound measurements, had them trained for four months, and found that, yeah, the way you position your feet affects which head of your gastroc grows more. There's still so many things I want to test. I quickly threw some plates under my feet to see if that's a crutch for people with ankle mobility issues, and it's not. I got more activation out of every single quad muscle across the board. If you want to grow more, all the programs are linked below. Only 20 bucks. Get after it.